السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي الله سبحانه وتعالى says in سورة الإسراء chapter 17 verse 1 after I would have learned Shaitan or Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim Subhana Lady Asra Bi Abdihi Layla Minal Masjid Al Harami Ilal Masjid Al Aqsa Lady Barakna Hawlahu Lunriahu Min Ayatina Inahu who was Samir al Basir. Limitless in his glory is he who transported his servant, who is Rasul alayhi salatu was salam, by night from the enviable house of worship at Mecca to the remote house of worship at Jerusalem where Allah had blessed its environs or precincts so that we might show him, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, some of our symbols for verily he alone is all hearing, all seeing. Alhamdulillah we are in one of the months of Haram and that is the month of Rajab and in the month of Rajab as our scholars say is when Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam did his journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and then the ascension to the seventh heaven, the Isra wal Mi'raj, as we all know it. And all our childhood, all our history, we've been learning about the uh, beautiful story of the Isra wal Mi'raj. But we were, we were, what we were not told is what's the occasion of having the verse of Al-Isra, Al-Mi'raj, only one verse, and the surah name Al-Isra, yet the rest of the surah is talking about the Israelites, and hence the, the other name of the surah, which is Bani Israel. As we will find out, and that's the subject of today and next time, and I don't know how many times later, because this is a deep subject, is the prophecies regarding Jerusalem in the Quran. And what's, what, why is it mentioned in the same uh, uh, surah? And, and why is the surah of the uh, ayah of Al-Isra is mentioned in the same surah discussing the prophecies regarding uh, Jerusalem or regarding the rise and fall of the Israelites twice? It's all in the same surah. As we know, and, and actually there is even more details regarding Al-Isra in Surah Al-Najm. Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in this surah and name it, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, including in, in the same surah uh, in details. But as we know, Al-Quran is have nothing but the truth and there is no falsehood in it. So there must be a message in that. One of the challenges regarding the prophecies in Surah Al-Isra regarding uh, Jerusalem or regarding the rise and fall of the Israelites is there is no hadith about it. There, even our, the, this challenges even our first interpreters or our predecessors had challenges <laughs> explaining these verses and the uh, Surah Al-Isra or Surah Bani Israel because there was no hadith to, uh, to explain it. So they reverted to historic facts. But even back then, our predecessors, they could not see the future, what was going to happen, and they couldn't, see, they couldn't see the second rise of the Israelites. So they assumed the two rises of the Israelites already took place before Islam because they couldn't see forward, because they didn't have these facts like we have today. So inshallah, this is what we're gonna talk about uh, regarding uh, these prophecies. But before we get into the subject, we, I, I need to mention or remind, and I know I mentioned it when we talked about Dawood alayhi salam and Jalut, but I'll remind ourselves again with it that the word Philistines originally came from people who migrated from Crete. 
they, they are Aryan uh, Palestinians who came because there is there was drought and they resided in Palestine or the land of Canaan and completely integrated into the society of the land of Canaan. But the Israelites today, even among them, Dr. Israel Fankelstein, who is an archaeologist in the University of Tel Aviv attested that at the time of the battle of Dawood and Jalud, David and Goliath, that the Torah and the Bible contradicts itself because it says that the Palestinians were having animosity against the Jews and that Palestinians were the giants, even though they know the giants were the Canaanites. And the Palestinians at that time, there were no signs that they existed at that time. So Dr. Israel Finkelstein say at that time, the Philistines already completely integrated into uh, the society of the Arab Canaans. They did not exist back then. So that he's, he's citing himself uh, a contradiction in the Torah and in the uh, Bible. That he said that the only artifact he was able to find is artifacts from the Canaans, the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians are now in Lebanon and the Romans and the Greeks, but he couldn't find, and this is someone who lives there, he couldn't find any artifact regarding the Jews or the Aryan Philistines. But how did the name Philistine come today? Is because later on the Greeks, when they occupied the area, in honor of the Aryan Philistines that uh, migrated there, they gave that name to uh, the land of Canaan and to the Jordan River and the adjoining lands. And then later on, the Romans gave that na permanent name to the area. So the current Philistines today are the actual Arab Canaans who've been there since 4000 BC. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we understand that. Also, we need to understand that Fal Palestine or the land of Canaan is mentioned six times in the Quran as a blessed land and one time as a holy land. In chapter Al-A'raf, chapter 7, in verse 137, is mentioned as a blessed land. In chapter Al-Isra, obviously the one I mentioned, is mentioned as a blessed land. In chapter Al-Anbiya, there is two verses, verse 71 and 81, mentioning uh, the land of Canaan or the land of Palestine as a blessed land. And in chapter 7, which is chapter 34, is mentioned as a blessed land. And in Surah Al-Ma'idah, when we discussed uh, Dawood and Jalut, we said when Musa السلام, told his people, oh my people, enter the holy land, that's the only time that was mentioned as a holy land, but the rest of the time it was mentioned as a blessed land. Another uh, point to make before we start with the prophecies is the authentic hadith talking about the rock will hide behind it a Jew and the rock will say there is a Jew hiding behind me. That authentic hadith is regarding the end of times when Al-Awar al-Dajjal or the false messiah will be uh, existing and that's toward the end of time and has nothing to do with the prophecies that exist in Surah Al-Isra which we will talk uh, about now. So as we know the Rasul alayhi salatu was salam uh, happened that uh, trip a, uh, a year before the migration to Medina. And that's where uh, when uh, the revelation of uh, the beginning of Surah Al-Isra took place, especially the first uh, few ayats uh, discussing the actual uh, uh, journey and then the rise and fall of the Israelites. The second ayah in Surah Al-Isra talks about وَأَتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ هُدًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَلَّا تَتَّخِدُوا مِن دُونِ وَكِيلًا And we gave Moses the book. What book Allah gave Moses? Allah gave Moses the Torah. So the book we're going to be talking about here is the Torah, not the Quran. And there is a reason why I'm mentioning that. i will come in the next ayah. And we made it a guide to the children of Israel, commanding that no other than me as a disposer of your affairs. Third ayah is that these Israelites are the offsprings of Nuh alayhi salam and that Nuh alayhi salam was a thankful servant of ours, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now from four, verse four onward, that's when the beginning of the prophecies. 
وقضينا إلى بني إسرائيل في الكتاب لتفسدن في الأرض مرتين ولا تعالون علوا كبيرا. And we made this known to the children of Israel through revelation. Twice you will cause mischiefs in earth, and twice you will have uh, elation or two rises. Now over here, the Kitab is mentioned one more time, or the Revelation. So what, what book are we talking about? The Torah. So 1800, the interpreters, saying that 1800 years before the advent of Islam, it's mentioned in the Torah, the fall and rise of the Israelites twice. And it's mentioned in their book. The early interpreters, when they spoke about and that when they interpreted these ayats regarding the fall and rise of the Israelites, they, they attested to the battle of Dawood and Jalut because it's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah and we talked about it, uh, we did three speeches about it or two speeches about it. It's in Surah Al-Baqarah and that was the beginning of the first state of Israel. But what they couldn't see is the second rise. And that's because at that time, the, the Umayya Empire was strong. The Khilaf, uh, before that, the Khilaf al-Rashida was strong. And then the Abbasi was strong. And then the Osmaniyin was strong. So they couldn't see that there will be another rise coming later on. But it then dawned on them to read the Old Testament, where it's mentioned in there, in the Book of Kings, that uh, uh, the fall and rise of the Israelites in their own books, it will be twice. So they thought the second rise was uh, during the Romans when, uh, well, let's go back. First of all, we know we ended the subject of Dawood and Jalut that uh, it was 1000 BC and uh, King Talut was the king at that time and that was the beginning of the state of Israel. Five years later, uh, 995, Dawood alayhi salam take control over the state of uh, the official state of Israel and he's in control and it was completely strong and remember at that time that was the Islam of that time uh, then after that his son uh, Sulaiman alayhi salam was in control and this is when uh, the state the first state of Israel uh, was at peak height uh, that duration be just between Dawood and Sulaiman alayhi salam about 100 years this is the peak height of the state of Israel. After the death of Sulaiman alayhi salam, the state of Israel divided into two kingdoms. The majority of the tribes, uh, 11 of them, uh, went and formed a kingdom in the north, and uh, uh, Sulaiman's son formed the kingdom in the south, uh, which is the kingdom of the Yehuda, and the first temple was uh, under uh, his control and they were fighting with each other. But at least the official state of Israel stayed and their occupiers came back and forth to, to, to attack them from the Assyrians, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, until the Assyrians destroyed the Northern Kingdom and then the uh, Arab Babylonians at the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it completely and destroyed the first temple in 586 BC. So the whole period is 414, the first state of Israel in the land of Palestine. This, our first predecessors attest to that and they cite that, but they couldn't see the second rise. And they thought because the Babylonians took all the Jews out of Palestine at that time as slaves in Babylonia, which is today's Iraq, then later on, when the Romans came, they allowed them to come and do and have religious right or autonomous right over Jerusalem and like a couple of streets around Jerusalem. But they did not have their kingdoms in there. So our first predecessors thought that was the second rise. And they assumed that was the second rise because they couldn't see forward. But historic facts indicate that that second rise never took place and they never were called the state of Israel except at the time when Dawood defeated Jalut until 586 uh, BC. But 1800 years before Islam, in the Torah, in the Book of Kings, the first Book of Kings, and that's the Old Testament, 
it, it decreed, it says that Allah or God decreed in the Torah that the children of Israel would enter the blessed land of Palestine and establish their own state and that's the first state. They will then indulge in corruption so great that Allah will punish them for it by sending unto them another people who will invade their homeland. And that was happened by the Arab Babylonian in 586 BC and this is in the Torah. Their corruption will crop up again. So their own Bible or their own Torah is talking about the second rise. Allah will send unto them the same people who will kill them and destroy whatever fell under their power. And then it goes in illustration and the name of the uh, tribes that uh, went uh, and formed the first kingdom and the second kingdom and the corruption that uh, they caused. And it talks about how the Assyrians and the Babylonians punished them because they deviated and corrupt the people of the two kingdom of the Israelites. This is in their own two books. And then comes the second book of Kings and the old, second book of Kings in the Old Testament that confirms that Allah does not punish people before giving them guidance and warning. So he sent his prophets first to guide the nations and to give them ample warning of the Lord's punishment. And this is what it means. The kitab over here is the, first, the revelation that it's talking about is the Torah. But then it's talking about another revelation that came later on, which is in the Quran, in Surah Al-Isra uh, at the time of the ascension of Al-Isra al miraj which is chapter 17, which is the same chapter that talks about the event of Isra and Mi'raj. With this in mind, one would argue, had the prophecy of the two rises already fulfilled, then it would have been difficult to understand its association with the journey of Isra and Mi'raj and the rest of the surah talking about the Israelites. It will be hard to associate the two stories. However, an alternative conclusion is that the first of the prophecy had taken place, which all scholars agreed, uh, over it, which is the Dawood and uh, Jalud from the Dawood and Jalud era, and the second part will take place in the future time of the Muslims. And this comes the second, uh, the fifth verse in the Quran. And before I get to the uh, uh, verse number five in the Surah Al Isra. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verbiage in, in, in verse 4 in Arabic, لَتُفْسِدُنَّ, the lamb in tufsidunna that you will cause corruption, is talking about the future. So if that will happen after this was revealed to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, how would Allah be talking about a rise that already took place in the future, in the past, using a future tense over here? Okay, so it's uh, the scholars explained over here the verbiage is talking about uh, the future with regard to the revelation that was revealed in the Torah first. So if we're thinking about it that way, then that or that rise already took place in thousand BC at the time of Dawood alayhi salam. Verse 5 talks about فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُولِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدًا <laughs> when the first of warning come to pass, we sent against you our servants given to terrible warfare. They entered the very inmost part of your homes and it was warning and it was a warning completely fulfilled. So when the first rise comes, which is the rise that we talked about, and because they cause corruption, Allah will send servants. Here some scholars of today argue that how would, if, if, if Allah using servants, it got to be believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a lot in the Quran many times, many verses, they use the words servants as all his human creations as his servants. And in many verses in the Quran, and I mentioned one time the story of Isa alayhi salam when he had the discussion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding, did you tell my servant to worship you and your mother? 
And he said, no, I told them what you told me. They are your servant. If you want to forgive them, you forgive them. If you want to punish them, you must punish them. So he, he referred to all serve, all creation, human creation of Allah as uh, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is saying, when, if, when, when, when the first promise comes and you cause uh, a lot of corruption and havoc, if mischief is done by the society of the people of Israel in the blessed land, and that's the land of Palestine or the land of Canaan, and if prophecy fulfilled by its occurrence, then the awaited divine punishment will be, we will send against you our servants who will completely destroy your town and that's exactly what happened to the first uh, rise the uh, the uh, the babylonians uh, uh, leading led by nabuchadnezzar completely went through the uh, town and destroyed everything and destroyed the first temple that uh, existed in jerusalem at that time and took all the israelites as slaves in Babylonia and they were not be able to come back ever until the Romans came and uh, they allowed them to migrate not all of them some of them stayed back in Iraq or Babylonia and some were able to come back and uh, when they came back uh, they were have were able to have their re religious rights and they were able to worship but they said, we want to have our own kingdom back again. So they tried to revolt in 70 AD against the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire crushed the revolution and took them slaves or, or, or in jail and destroyed the second temple, but kept some of it around. But in 135 uh, AD, they completely, the Romans destroyed the... Uh, the uh, second uh, the second temple that they built and completely obliterated them and kicked the Jews out of uh, the land of Canaan out of Palestine so when al Khalifa Omar radiallahu an came way later more than 500 years later when he came and liberated Palestine from the Romans there was no Jews there were no Jews in there because some interpreters say that uh, uh, the first rise is when the uh, they had two interpreta interpretation, and this is very few. Some inter contemporary interpreters say the first rise was when the uh, Jews revolted against the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam in Al Medina. First of all, Surah Al Isra or Surah Bani Israel talking about a specific place and a specific area which is the land of Palestine. Uh, second, in the time of Rasul Rasul in Medina, the Jews were not a kingdom and they were not a power. They were the business people. Okay. Uh, another uh, very rare interpretation that they say Khalifa Omar, when he came, uh, he's the one who liberated uh, Palestine from the Jews. At the time, Al Khalifa Omar liberated Palestine from the Romans and the, Ro and the Jews were not in there from 500 years before that. So when Khalifa Omar took it over from the Romans, there were no Jews in there. He just made the Romans sign to make sure that the Jews were not gonna come back uh, again. Inshallah, next time, this is the first regarding the first tribe. Inshallah, next time we'll talk about the uh, second rise of the uh, and the prophecy of the second rise, which uh, which is a little bit involved uh, regarding especially the language in the Arabic and the historic facts and uh, when it happened. And I remind myself first and foremost with the hadith of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam that he recommended us to say subhanallah bihamdih, subhanallah al -Azim, at least a hundred times a day. It's very uh, heavy in the scale of good deeds and very light on the tongue and very beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.